Hello data friends. Data Activator in Microsoft Fabric takes action based on what's happening in your data. Data Activator lets you monitor your data and create triggers to react to your data changes. Today we are data analyst for a company that sells and ships a range of products to the city of Redmond. We want to create a reflex that monitors the packages that are out for delivery. One category of products you ship is medical prescriptions that need to be refrigerated at the particular temperature during transit. So you want to create a reflex that sends an email to the shipping department if the temperature of a package containing a prescription is higher or lower than a certain threshold. The ideal temperature should be between 33 degrees and 41. Since the reflex events already contain a similar trigger, we create one specifically for the packages shipped to the city of Redmond. Let's get started. So at the beginning we need to select appropriate experience or persona, in this case it's data activator. I can do it from this, from this position as well. And then I would like to just make sure that I have appropriate workspace selected, the right workspace is MS Learn Fabric. And now uh, from this perspective, from this place, I can create new item. Uh, to do this, I need to just click this new item button on the left top corner. So when I click this, I see the new view with all the types of items. I can filter this and then select appropriate type. And then we just created new reflex. I will use uh, sample data in this case. So I'm clicking this button, sam use sample data. And here we have uh, several things in this uh, reflex uh, template created and, uh, and ready to use. At the beginning, I will just rename our current reflex because the default is current date time. So I'm going to change this and I'm going to call it Contoso uh, Shipping Reflex. That's it. We are ready to go and ready to explore the uh, template delivered by Microsoft. The Reflex home screen is divided into two sections, the design mode and data mode. You can select the mode by selecting the respective tab on the bottom left of the screen. The design mode tab is where you define your objects with your triggers, properties and events. The data mode tab is where you can add your data sources and view the data that your reflex processes. For this lab, we are using the sample data provided by Data Activator. This sample is already set up with three event streams that are monitoring the package delivery status. As you see, when I click each of these different events, I can see the different data being used in the stream. So you can think about it as a data set, but actually those data are continuously being updated. Let's make sure that we are in the data mode. If not, you can click data mode at the bottom and select the package in transit because this is the events we are, will be looking at right now. So now we have this data set, we have this stream here. Yeah? We'll be changing this a little bit. The package ID is one of the column that we'll be looking at. The other column is Uh, temperature. This is another um, attribute we are interested in. The third one is called chain type. The fourth one is the city column. And the last one is special care column. Those attributes we are um, interested specifically. This is the way how we can explore the data and we can monitoring how the data are incrementally incoming to the Microsoft Fabric.
In the real world scenario, there might not be a need to create a new objects for this reflex since the data activator sample already includes an object called package. But for this lab, we create a new object to demonstrate how to create one. Let's create a new object called Redmond packages. So now we'll create new objects. You can click this uh, button on the right hand side, assign to new objects. Make sure that you have package in transit object uh, or the data set selected. Yeah? The new object name will be Redmond packages. So that's one of the thing. Now we need to design the assigned key columns. The main column will be package ID as a key column. And then the additional attributes would be like city, cold chain type, special care and temperature. Now we are going to save this. Save and go back to the design mode. Now if we scroll down, we can see on the left that we have our uh, new object created, Redmond packages. We have no triggers, four properties and one package in transit events. Let's review what you want your trigger to do. Uh, you want to create a reflex that sends an email to the shipping department. Uh, if the temperature of the package containing a prescription is higher or lower than a certain threshold. The ideal temperature should be between 33 and 41 degrees. Since the reflex events already contain a similar trigger, you will create one specifically for packages shipped to the city of Redmond. Now when you have package in transit event selected, on the top click the new trigger button and we will create new trigger. By default is untitled name so we need to give our name, in this case it will be medicine temp out of range. That's our name of the trigger and you can see that we have new trigger created. Now we need to select the property or event column that triggers our reflex. Since we have few columns, so we need to select one of those and that column would be temperature. And immediately on the diagram we see the different temperatures over time of different packages. And currently the diagram shows us the last few hours of data. The next step is to define detect section. This uh, tells us what kind of or type of condition I want to trigger from this property. In our case we want to uh, react on temperature. As I mentioned the temperature should be normally between 33 and 41 which means if the temperature exits from this range we want to react. So far we have defined the property and condition and uh, we want the trigger to fire on but that still doesn't include all parameters you need. Uh, we need still to make sure that the trigger only fires for the city of Redmond and the special care type of medicine. So let's go ahead and add a couple of filters for these conditions. So the first one is city the special care is another condition, another attribute we need to define uh, with equal condition to medicine, as I mentioned. And let's add another filter. And the third one will be called chain type should be refrigerated. We are almost done. Now at the end we need to define the action that we want to do when the trigger will be fired. In this case we want to send an email to the shipping department. Select the email and in this case I'm the shipping department so I'm selecting myself. Of course in here in this send to address you can define group of people or uh, email group or you can define uh, several uh, email addresses. Now let's uh, define the subject. The subject will be Redmond Medical Package Outside Acceptable Temperature Range. 
let's define the headline, the headline temperature too high or too low, and some additional information. We will select uh, this temperature attribute from the checkbox list. Let's click save and then start. Now we have just created and started a trigger in Data Activator. The only problem with this trigger is that while the trigger sent an email with the temperature, the trigger didn't send the package ID of the package. Let's go ahead and update the trigger to include the package ID value. So now let's select the package in transit event from Redmond packages. And on the top, let's create new property, clicking new property button. So we need to click this select a property or event column and now create column from an event stream or record. We are selecting package in transit and we need to select package ID because this is the property we want to create. Let's not forget to change the property name from untitled to package ID. We have our package ID here. Let's select medicine temp out of range trigger. Scroll to the act section at the bottom and select the additional information. Now we can add, because we see the package ID, so we can add this additional information to the email. Do not click save button yet. Since we updated the trigger, the correct action should be to update and not save the trigger. But for this lab, we do the opposite and select save button instead of update button to see also what happens. The reason you should have selected the update button is because when you select to update the trigger, it both saves the trigger and updates the currently running trigger with the new conditions. Let's go ahead and select the save button. Because we selected save button instead of update, now you can notice this message on the top. There is a property update available. Update now to ensure the trigger has the most recent changes. It means the trigger hasn't been published yet. Yeah, so let's click this update and now the trigger is updated. Now the trigger is published. So now it's time to open our email application and check if we have any emails sent from Microsoft Fabric Reflex. As you can see, I have some emails and in this email you can see that there's an appropriate title, there's appropriate uh, description in the email. We have this temperature too high or too low, which tells us some more details and we have appropriate additional attributes like package ID, temperature and etc. and etc. Apologize for the trigger time is not actually synchronized with what you saw in the Microsoft Fabric, but unfortunately I had some issue for a few days with my uh, Microsoft account and my Outlook. So that's why I received all those emails a few days later. And that's it in this video. Thanks for watching and tell me what other scenarios uh, would you use data activator in. Let me know in the comments below. If you want to learn more about Microsoft Fabric, visit Microsoft Fabric Community website, link below, uh, which is a phenomenal knowledge hub for this product. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and see you next time. Bye bye.